The last method for multiplying polynomials, this is not a method that was available to us when we were adding and subtracting, um, but I like this last method maybe even more than the vertical method um, because it's going to give us a frame, a conceptual frame that we're also going to use incessantly in the next couple of topics when we talk about factoring. Factoring is really about doing the opposite of the process that we're doing today. Today we're multiplying two polynomials together and getting the completely simplified result. Factoring is going the opposite direction. It's taking the result and trying to figure out what multiplication problem it would have come from. It's like Jeopardy, right? We get the answer, we're trying to figure out what the question was. That's factoring. And so the method we're going to talk about next for multiplying is going to be a method that's going to make it easier for us to reverse the process and factor later on. This is a method that's called the lattice method. And the way that the lattice method works, if you've seen, if you know or if you have a kid who's in the school system right now learning arithmetic for the first time, they're probably using the lattice method left and right in their arithmetic classrooms nowadays. Um, this is part of what's sometimes called the new math uh, that generates all kinds of memes on Facebook where people say, you know, how does this math even work? I don't even understand how second graders are multiplying numbers anymore. Uh, how come math isn't the same as when I learned it, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it's exciting. One of the things that the, 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 the new math does is it takes a new way of multiplying multi-digit numbers, so not the traditional algorithm we talked about, but this lattice method, um, and it trains students in how to do that with numbers, and then when they come and they see this method used with polynomials later on in their algebra classroom, it's something familiar. Um, so here's how the lattice method works. It takes each of these factors, 4v squared minus 5v minus 2, and it writes it as either the header of a row or the header of a column in this lattice. So I'll write the terms 4v squared minus 5v minus 2 across the top of the headers of this lattice. And then I'll write 6v minus 7, sorry, plus 7. I'll write those as the headers of the rows running down the left side of the lattice. And just taking this time to set up this lattice does one more really nice cognitive thing. It creates six different boxes that we have to fill out. And we knew in the previous problem that it takes us six multiplications to multiply a three-digit number by a two-digit number or to multiply a polynomial with three terms by a polynomial with two terms. And this is a nice visual representation that reminds me, if I haven't done six products yet, then I'm not finished. And it's very easy if you're using the horizontal method, by the way, to multiply polynomials to forget how many terms that you need. So lattice is a visual way to reinforce that, in fact, in this example, we need six. And then what happens is exactly what you would think happens, that we fill in the lattice by multiplying together the monomial that's at the top of its column by the monomial that's at the left side of its row. So what goes into this first box is the result of multiplying 4v squared times 6v. That was the last product that we talked about when we were using the traditional method. The 4 and the 6 multiply together to give me 24. The v squared and the v to the first power multiply, adding the exponents to give me 24v to the third. And then we continue that multiplication process to fill out the other six, the other five, cells in this table. Negative 5v times 6v gives me negative 30v to the power 2. Negative 2 times 6v gives me negative 12v. 4v squared times 7 gives me 28v squared. Minus 5v times 7, negative 35v. And then negative 2 times positive 7, negative 14. And so all of my six multiplications are now showing up here in this example. They're the same as the six multiplications that we had to do to fill out these two rows in the traditional algorithm. Right? The same six terms. We're just repackaging them. We're organizing them in a different way. And now that all of my six terms are on the table, what do you think we have to do to get our final answer? Rearrange them with the like terms. Rearrange them with the like terms. Find the like term pairs and add them together. Right? So that's the one drawback to the lattice method, is that it doesn't give us this prepackaged way of organizing the like terms. <coughs> next to one another, like we had when we did the traditional algorithm. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to move the 6v and the plus 7 over to the right side of the table real quick, because um, I think this is maybe the way that, that it's seen more frequently in the K-12 classrooms. Um, because in this particular example, at least, where do I find the like terms? Minus 12v, minus 35v, they happen to be right here on a diagonal next to one another. 
Um, that won't always happen. It depends on what terms are in your original um, polynomials, but because our original polynomials didn't skip any terms, uh, we end up with the like terms sitting in these diagonal rows. Uh, so minus 12v, minus 35v, those add together to give me minus 47v. Um, similarly with the v squared terms, those are also arranged on a diagonal with one another. 28v squared, negative 30v squared, those happen to be right here. Add those together, and I end up with, what do I get there? Negative 2v squared. And then I have this pair of terms that doesn't have a match, 24v cubed and minus 14. And there it is. So by adding together the like terms that are in my lattice, I get my simplified answer. So I'm really fond of the lattice method, again, not just because of the way it simplified this calculation, but because we're also going to be able to use this approach when we get to factoring uh, to help us think about not how to work one of these lattices from the outside in, but rather how to work one of these lattices from the inside out. Uh, and that's where it really uh, becomes an even more powerful tool when we start talking about factoring.